Happy New Year. Hope you've made all your New Year's resolutions. Trust you haven't broken them already. Um, the one about eating healthy, I've broken already. Um, but we've got some other ones that are still going. So, um, yeah, Happy New Year. Great to be with you. We're um, talking about reset this morning, um, the theme that you're doing. Um, but I'm just going to, just before we jump into the ministry of the Word, I just want to uh, show you a few pictures and show you a little bit of my travel, as um, Pastor Bill's asked me to do that. Um, last time I was here was the end of October, and I left here and went on a six-week trip uh, to India and a few stops in India, and then into Nepal for a couple of days, and then from there to Africa, because India and Africa are close together, as you know, um, I think miles apart. Um, and then, then back. But, so I'll just show you some pictures of that. Um, the first part of it, you'll see um, a leadership training school of some of our uh, leaders in, um, in Assam, where our local churches, we have two local churches there, so we got the young people together and, uh, and the leaders, the young leaders, these new believers that have been saved in our churches come together. So I did training with them for um, a couple of days, so you'll see that. After that, you'll see um, an interview of a young girl who is typical of our school in Infa. We've got 12 students that are going to graduate in the middle of the year who want to be missionaries, want to preach the gospel, want to serve the Lord. So we're very excited about that. So you'll just get a snippet from her. Um, <clears throat> and then you'll see some pictures of Nepal and... Um, and Ghana as well. I may say some things as the music's going, so if you could leave my mic on, that'd be good, Finn. Thank you. So we got that video clip. That'd be great. No, these are the pictures. I need a video clip. They were the ones you saw last week. Nope. I'm getting a... Where's Nathan? I'm getting a shake of the head from up there. <clears throat> You got my PowerPoint. Maybe we'll come back to it, will we? What do we do? I need some help from somebody. <laughs> my wife says it's submission impossible. <laughs> Helping me beyond help. Okay. <clears throat> what are we doing? You got, give me, have you got my PowerPoint then? Okay. Well, I had a wonderful time. And I've got hundreds of photos on my phone, but it's too small to show you all. Um, isn't it awesome? Technology is awesome, but when it goes wrong, you're left um, floundering. So anyway, great to see you all. Need to press the reset button. Yeah. Um, so I had a great time, had a wonderful time through um, India, Nepal. We're looking at starting a new war work in Nepal. Um, the pastor and leader that we're working with there, we gathered his, some of his leaders together. There's 12 of them, uh, 12 leaders that of churches and then a few of other leaders that came together. I got a message from him when you, if we do get these photos up, you'll see um, a picture of a broken wall. That's his house. And on New Year's Eve, a wild elephant came to his house and ripped out his side of his side wall. So um, I was hoping to show you that as well. So um, I don't know what we're going to do. Maybe I'll just get into my message, Pastor Bill, or? So, okay. Uh, we got it now. I'm getting thumbs up. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I only thought this happened in developing nations. Hallelujah. Um, <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about how life is a journey. And each one of us is on a journey. And that starting the new year, um, we had an old year, we've got a new year. It's a time to reflect. But life is a journey that is full of summers and winters. And that is normal. Life is, the journey of life is full of days and nights. There are cold times, there are hot times, there's all sorts of times in the journey of life. And that is normal. We're going to look at a story in Exodus chapter 14, a story that you'll all be very familiar with, especially those of you who have grown up in the church and been around church for a long time. You'll know the story. Um, it's the story where God takes the Israelites on a journey. They're in Egypt and they went to Egypt under Joseph, and he actually, Egypt rescued them. It was a great place for them for a period of time. But over years and years later, Egypt for the Israelites became a place that they were calling out to God, saying, get us out of here. We don't want to be here anymore. So God sent Moses to them to take them on a journey from where they were to where the promised land and into the promises that he had for his people. So we're looking at journey. 
And um, in this story, we're going to just look at, there's so many things in this story that we could pick up, but we're going to pick up three key principles that we can learn for you and for me, the, the story that the, the journey that the Israelites went on, but the journey that you and I are on in life. And we just learn a few, a few things. They were on a journey, God led them, they came out of Egypt, and they've got this awesome pillar of fire and this cloud that is leading them, which symbolized and it really was the presence of God. So when the presence of God moved, they moved. How awesome is that? When God moved, they moved. They knew that if they just followed that cloud, they would be in the perfect will of God. How awesome. Wouldn't you like that for your life today? Just to know that you're in the perfect will of God. Anyway, they're in the perfect will of God, going, being led out of Egypt. God gets them to the Red Sea. And they've got a mountain on this side, a mountain on this side, the Red Sea there coming from the tropics. I'm thinking of uh, Port Douglas. So there's coconut palms. They're drinking coconut, fresh coconut. They're relaxed right on the Red Sea. Everything is amazing. But in just a moment, that, that journey, that moment of being in absolute presence of God, having absolute confidence that they are right where God wants them to be, everything is so well and they turn around and everything changes in a minute. You know, life can be like that. Our journey can be like that. That everything can be so amazing and then we can turn around or get a news, go see a doctor, get news from somebody, and everything can change in just a moment. The Israelites, they turned around and saw the Egyptians coming. The Egyptian army was on the way. So... They went from rejoicing and enjoying their coconut and relaxing on the beach to Moses, why did you bring us here? Moses, we could have died in Egypt. Moses, we should have stayed in Egypt. Why did you bring us out here to this place? The pillar of fire is still there. The cloud is still there. The presence of God is still there. But now their attitude has so quickly changed. Ah, any of you like that? Circumstances, situation changes. You can feel like you're in the presence of God. Circumstances, situation change. And so quickly we're going, well, maybe God didn't really bring me here. God, where are you? God, is this where I'm meant to be doing? And everything that God has spoken to us just goes, becomes questioned. So let's have a look at the, the first verse in Exodus 14. We're going to look at verse 13. I'm going to look, look at just uh, three quick things that we can learn from this story for each one of us as we transition into a new year. So Moses answered the people. They've just complained to him. He says, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. So do not be afraid. That's a common theme through scripture. When God spoke to people, so many times he came to them and said, don't be afraid. Circumstances, situations are changing. Things are in transition but don't be afraid. Well, we're not talking about fear today. He says, stand firm. Stand firm. Don't run away scared. Don't move. Don't take off. Stand firm in the fact that I have brought you to this place. Stand firm that I have led you. Stand firm in the promises. Stand firm is this is where I want you to be. In 1 Corinthians 15, um, the apostle Paul writes, and he writes to the people and says, but thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Now, who's been moved by circumstances and situations? Doubts and fears, worries and troubles. Maybe something you see on the news. Moves us, things move us. And Paul is saying to them, don't be moved. Why? Because thanks be to God, because Jesus is leaving you in the victory. You're in victory. We're in victory. You are in positioned in victory. He says, remember that you're in victory and then all those other troubles and stuff like that, we fight those troubles and difficulties from a place of victory. He says, but stand firm. Stand up strong. Don't be weak. Don't be pushed around. Then in Ephesians 6 verse 14, it says, stand firm then with the belt of of truth wrapped around your waist and the breastplate of righteousness in place. Stand firm, stand firm. Saying, wrap yourself in the truth, the truth of God's word. 
as we start the new year, so important to come back and to wrap ourselves in the truth of the Word of God. To take a reset and say, God, what have you said to me? To take time to remind ourselves of God's promises for ourselves, to, to you. The things that He's spoken to you over the years, the things that He's spoken to you about this year, but to remind yourself of His promises and to stand firm in them. Oh, there are so many promises in the Scripture. I um, travel a lot and sometimes I have trouble with my phone and um, it won't do what it's meant to do. Um, and just one function's not working, it's not connecting, messages are not going, different things happen. Um, but I've learned now that after I get frustrated and angry and think this thing is stupid, this stupid iPhone, why couldn't they work it out? Um, just turning it off, letting it, and then turning it back on, it just resets itself, it works itself out, and then functions properly. So the standing firm for me is saying, I, I'm going to reset. I'm going to stand firm in the promises that God has given to me so I can function properly. So reminding ourselves of the powerful truths of Scripture that you are the righteousness of Christ. Scripture promises that. Whether you feel it or not, whether even you're acting it or not, you are the righteousness of Christ. That you are righteous inside of Jesus Christ based on what He has done, not based on what you have done. And out of that comes justification, comes peace with God, comes our identity and being united with Christ, or wonderful truths. In fact, that truth of uh, the teaching of being in union with Christ is one of Paul's main teachings throughout the New Testament. Hundreds and hundreds of times he talks about being in Christ or being united with Christ, about being joined to Christ. So Paul says, stand firm. Another spot he said, stand firm on my teachings and my letters. Don't let these things, don't be moved by them. Don't go to something else. So to stand firm for you and me is to take time to say, I'm going to fill my mind with the Word of God. I'm going to remind myself of the truths of the Scriptures, the promises that are there. And then out of being in union with Christ, there's a liberty that comes with the power to overcome sin in our life, that the Holy Spirit power is there to help us overcome. What a powerful truth that you're not on your own. You don't have to do it by yourself. That brings transformation to you and I. That, yeah, we're new creations, but the Holy Spirit, so as we meditate on the Word, as we stand on the Word, that we become and become more and more like Jesus. How awesome is that? So I encourage you, stand firm on the truth of the Word. So make 2020 a year where you're saying, yeah, I'm standing firm on the promises. And I've had times where I've, I've had to do this. Sandra and I have had times where, uh, like at the moment, finances are short for our travel. But God's told me, you're going to be a missionary. You're traveling to the nations. I'm standing firm on that. We've had that at different times in our journey of serving the Lord, particularly on the mission field. How is this going to work? Well, God, you said I'd be a missionary. You spoke that to me. I'm going to stand firm on it. I'm not going to move away from it. I'm not going to be shaken. So we need to get tough and just stand firm. Then the next thing that Moses says to the people is in Exodus 14. If we go grab that up there, it says, The Lord will fight for you, which is an amazing truth. And that could be an old sermon in itself, that the Lord fighting for you. But then he says, you only need to be still. So we're standing firm and now we're saying, be still. Taking a moment to take a breath. Troubles around, things are there, but stilling our heart. Psalm 46 verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. For me, this being still is putting Christ at the center. It's saying, I'm going to take a moment and put Jesus right at the middle of what's going on. And Pastor Bill mentioned it, and I know you do it here each year, and I've done it for many years. But doing your life journal, taking a moment to say, Christ, you're at the center. In the busyness of everything else, I'm going to take a moment to be still and hear your voice. I love the little acronym, SOAP. Scripture, observation, application, prayer. For me, many years, my devotion time was the scripture and the observation. But how powerful is the application? When the Holy Spirit, the God of heaven and earth, the creator of the universe, speaks to you about your life and says, I want you to, to look at this. I've got this promise for you. 
oh, I want you to go and speak to this person about this area. I want you to go and do this. How powerful is that to know that the God of heaven and earth has spoken to you? For me, the life journal was so liberating. I know when we introduced it here in the church, it must have been 20 years ago. Um, but it went from me being trying to do a discipline of reading my Bible to tick the box that I'm a good Christian and a good pastor to actually having a moment where the God of heaven and earth actually wants to speak to me about my life. And it's life's transforming. It's being still. It's quietening your soul and your spirit. Mary had a moment like this. If we can have a look at Luke chapter 10. There's a um, <clears throat> Mary and Martha. I, in this passage, I relate more with Martha. I'm a Martha. I'm a worker. I want stuff done. So sitting and waiting and relaxing, some people love to do that. That's not me. But let's have a look at this verse. Jesus has gone to Martha's house. She says, so Martha, the she is there. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. Hallelujah. How awesome is that? Just to take time every day to be a Mary to sit at the feet of Jesus and put aside some time in the busyness of life and in everything that needs to be done to hear the voice of God. God wants to speak to you, I assure you of that. He wants to speak to you. And then he goes on. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. Anyone like that? Distracted by all the work that's got to be done. All these people sitting around, all they're doing is sitting around and there's jobs to be done, there's stuff to be done. Any of you Marthas like me? Um, want to get in and get the stuff done. Um, she came to, the, to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that, she, that my sister has left me to do all the work for myself and tell her to come and help me? And then Jesus goes on and commends Mary for sitting at his feet, to taking a moment to spend time with Christ. Doesn't mean the jobs don't need to get done. Doesn't mean that the kids don't need to be looked after. Doesn't mean that you don't have to go to work and do all those things that are life and part of the journey. But it was Mary was commended because she took a moment. She took some time to sit at the feet of Jesus. The master is in her house. Her king, her savior, her Lord is in her house. And she spent time to listen. If we want to reset, if you want things to be different, as we travel the journey, can I encourage you? Put aside that time. Turn off Netflix. Spend some less time on your phone looking at social media stuff. Um, there's only, yeah, so much of that news channel that you need to watch. Um, as mothers who are, if you're a mother looking after children, find a way. Maybe put them in front of the TV and go into the room and um, watch some, um, do your Bible reading. I did that once. I left the kids and I went to bed. Uh, Sandra was at work and I came out and the house was covered with hundreds and thousands. Fortunately, I woke up in time to clean it all up before Sandra got home. Um, otherwise, there would have been fire when I got home. Um, so don't do that. But mums, whatever the busyness is, it'll always be there. So find some time. Adjust your schedule. Find a way to be a Mary for 15, 20 minutes a day. If you want to do it for an hour, go for it. Um, but not all of us are, are like that. But carve out some time. Change your disciplines. It's so, so important. As the Israelites traveled the journey, God said to them, stand firm, but be still. I know the enemy's right there. I know there's a job to do. I know there's something to be done right there, but be still. Take a moment to inquire of me. Take a moment to hear my voice. And if you ever look through the scriptures, we won't do it now, but if you look through the Old Testament, there's so many people who got themselves into trouble because they didn't inquire of the Lord. They didn't ask the Lord what to do. They went ahead, made their own plan, got themselves into trouble. Could spend a whole heap of time on that. It won't do that. Hebrews 11:27. 27. It's about Moses. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. He took a moment to see the invisible God. It is possible for you to see the invisible God if you will put the time in. If you would just take a moment each day and say, yes, I will listen to the invisible God. I will see him face to face. I will hear his voice or a prompting of the Holy Spirit through his scriptures. 
It is possible. It's not just for pastors or some spiritual person. It is for each and every one of us now. We don't have to go through a high priest or somebody else. It is possible for you from the youngest to the oldest to hear God's voice and to see him and have him indirect your life. As we travel the journey, we need to be able to do this. It's part of the reset each and every day. Mary did it so well. Last one. Let's have a look at Exodus 14, verse 15. So they're standing firm, they're being still, and then the Lord says to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites, move on. So standing firm and being still is not an excuse for not moving on. It's not an excuse for getting stuck in the moment. It's not an excuse to get stuck in one place. He says, you're going to travel the journey we want to reset. We want to move into all that God has for you. You're going to have to move on and leave some things behind. I travel heaps. And I can't take everything with me when I travel. To go from where I am in Cairns, uh, most times I fly out of Cairns, to where I would go to minister or be or the nation that I'm going to, I have to leave some things behind. I can't take everything with me. Life is the same as you travel on a journey. The airlines don't allow me to take everything with me. I'm not allowed to take chainsaws on the plane. I'm not allowed to um, take batteries, big batteries in my bag. Flammable stuff, they always ask me, every time. 16 flights in a month and a bit, and they, every time I have got on the plane, they ask me the same question. Any flammable things, any batteries, any of this. Have to leave some things behind. Can't take guns. So it's all sorts of things you can't take with you. Not that I have any guns to take with me, don't worry. Um, but then I've got weight restrictions, so I can't take everything. Even the good things that I would like to take with me, like my beautiful wife every time. I can't take her with me on every trip. I've got to leave some things behind. It's the same in the life and the journey of life that you and I travel. We have to leave some things behind. We want to take all our baggage with us. All the problems, all the troubles, all the worries. Leave them in 2019. You leave them in that old decade. Leave them behind. Don't take them with you. Because if you take the problems from the past and you carry them with you into tomorrow, tomorrow's going to look just like yesterday. Last year will be just, this year will be just the same as last year if you carry all the hurts, the disappointments, the discouragements, the failures, the, the troubles. If you carry them from last year and you bring them with you, 2020 is going to look just the same. This decade will look just the same as the last decade if you keep carrying everything with you. Many times, Sandra and I, we've, well, a number of times, I think it's three or four times, we've changed countries. You can't take all everything that you've got in your house with you. You've got to leave stuff behind. You have to make choices. You and I, today, you are faced with a choice. As we're resetting and we want, the reset idea is that we want all that God has for us on the journey. Part of the process of resetting is to say, what do I need to leave behind? What disappointment, what hurt, what frustration? I'm going to let it go and move on. The journey of following Christ is that same journey where we, Jesus, uh, Paul writes, to put off that old nature, to put off the old characteristics, to put off those old things and to put on the nature of Christ, to put on the new creation life. It is the journey of following Christ. It happens at salvation, but it is the journey that we travel that we constantly have to. To move on, you've got to leave some things behind. The Israelites are there. They've got a mountain here, a mountain there, an enemy here, the sea there, and God is telling them, move. They've got nowhere to go. But God would say to us, just pack up, get ready, time to move. Uh, so let's let this new year, 2020, be a year where we move on from things that have stopped us from being and moving into that place that God has for us. So my message for you this morning is this. Stand firm on the truths of Scripture. Stand firm on the promises of God. Stand firm on the things that He has spoken to your heart. Nail them down. Get them secure. Then be still. Take time every day to hear His voice, to hear His whisper. Be like Moses, who was able to endure, was able to go through and do amazing things because he, was, he saw the invisible God. He had troubles, he had difficulties all along the way. But he was able to do it because he had spent time and he inquired of God and he had heard the Lord's voice. And there are things you need to move on from. Just move on. Sounds so simple, I know. But let go of the hurts, let go of the pains, let go of those things. Don't carry them for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. It's too long. 
Let it go. We're in a new decade. Leave that stuff in the past decade. Move into the new decade fresh and refreshed and reset and ready to go. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask the musicians to come and let us pray together. And then we'll just have a time of prayer in a minute as well. So the musicians will come and get ready. So let's pray together. Jesus, I thank you for this story. I thank you that each one of us is on a journey. We're not traveling someone else's journey. We've got our own journey to travel. And Jesus, I thank you that we are on a journey with you, that you are God Emmanuel, who promised to be with us on the journey. And Lord, that you ask us to learn the lessons from the journey that the Israelites traveled, to stand firm on all the truths that you are in your scripture, to be still, to inquire of you, to listen to your voice and Lord, to move on, to not get paralyzed by fear, to not be held by the past, but to move in to the future that you have for us. So Jesus, I just pray that each one of us would hear your voice at the beginning of this year and make a decision to say, yeah, Lord, I want 2020 to be all that you want it to be for me. Amen.